Here we are, one more big prospect promotion to talk about up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Thursday, September 14th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. The Orioles are promoting one of their top prospects. Which one is it? Heston Kierstad. And if you're trying to figure out how to spell it, you're not alone. That's K-J-E-R-S-T-A-D. Heston Kierstad. Ryan Mountcastle exited due to left shoulder discomfort. He's day-to-day. So here we are, the Orioles need a uh, first base replacement, and they're calling up Kierstad. He's 24 years old, former second overall pick back in 2020. This year in the minors was batting 303 with 21 homers, a 904 OPS. Scott, this is, I think, just bigger for baseball at this point. I I don't know that we're going to pick him up and use him for fantasy. Obviously, it's exciting for Orioles fans. What are your thoughts Mm -hmm. here on Heston Kierstad? Well, I, I love him as a prospect. He was thought to have a lot of power when he was drafted. Um, had myocarditis soon afterwards. So we didn't really get a g- good look at him until this year. But it's gone as well as could be hoped for. His strikeout rate was way down. His zone contact rate at AAA is near 90%. So he's he's proven to be not just a good power hitter, but a good all-around hitter. And I have him in my top 25 prospects as a result. Part of the issue for fantasy is, well, okay, yeah, it's late in the year. Um, is he going to have enough time to win our trust? But also, how much is he going to play? It seems like Ryan Mountcastle is going on the IL okay, but they also have Ryan O'Hearn who can play first base and has played it well this year when they've needed him to. His numbers are good. He's hit well lately. Uh, there will be times when they can both get in the lineup, but they're both left-handed hitters, so it's not like a clear platoon situation. I don't know how it's going to shake out exactly for Heston Kierstad, but I think he would need a, a weekend sort of like Jason Jason Dominguez had when he was first called up for us to really consider looking into to Kierstad in standard size leagues. Yeah, really exciting prospect here. He's a big left-handed batter. I saw him out at first pitch Arizona last year. He's got this big le- leg kick, so might take a little bit of time for him to get his timing down. Um You know, could be some struggles there, but big power hitter. Lots to like there with Heston Kierstad. The big news of the day, outside of that promotion, Max Scherzer was placed on the IL with a low-grade strain of the Terrace Major Muscle muscle in his right shoulder, uh, and he'll likely miss the rest of the regular season and the playoffs as well. It's just a huge blow for the Texas Rangers, who lost Jacob deGrom. They go out, they're all in, they make this trade for Max Scherzer. Now they lose him as well. So, some other recent pitcher news on top of that, Sandy Alcantara, he went on the IL last week with a uh, right forearm flexor strain, which has since been diagnosed as a UCL sprain. And when we hear that, we know there's a chance that he might need Tommy John surgery and, and could miss an extended period of time. It's a speculation for now, Scott, but two massive injuries uh, from the, the pitching landscape here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, and bad timing, obviously, for the Scherzer th- injury the rangers might lose him for the playoffs as well and that damages their world series hopes and you know this, this it could have implications heading into next year i, I mean I, I don't think we're going to be drafting scherzer like an ace given the way he seems to be wearing down here uh finally as he approaches 40 it's it's amazing that with his delivery and his velocity and all the innings that he, he managed to hold up for as long as he did but he's finally showing his age And, um, you know, hopefully he's fine for spring training next year. Sounds like he will be, but I would have questions about um, him holding up over the course of of 2024. And then, yeah, I mean, Alcantara could end up missing the whole thing. Or he could come back this year. That still hasn't been ruled out for the Marlins. He's, He's Our latest update is that he resumed throwing Wednesday, even with this UCL issue. So it wouldn't surprise me if we found out he needs Tommy John surgery, but... I don't know that we can drop them everywhere yet either. Uh, So that makes it extra frustrating. All right. So we do have some pitching injuries, some quick replacements for the final couple of weeks of the season. I'm just going to rattle off some names and their matchups, their final three matchups. Ryan Pepio, he is due to face the Tigers, the Giants, and then at the Giants in his final start. Mike Clevenger, his last three starts at the Nationals, at the Red Sox, and then home against the Padres. Logan T. Allen, Looks like he's facing the Royals, the Orioles, and the Tigers. And then Christopher Sanchez, who 
had a pretty impressive start here on Wednesday. 10 strikeouts, 21 swinging strikes. We're not sure what his matchups are going to be because the Rangers are, uh, I mean, the Phillies are in between a five and six man rotation. They're talking about, you know, piggybacking Christopher Sanchez. So it's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, how would you rank that group? Well, I do want to preface this with it was an electric start for Christopher Sanchez against the Braves on Wednesday and it really elevated his stock for next year, I would say. But because of that piggybacking situation with with, with Michael Lorenzen, which sounds likely moving forward, he's going to be fourth of this group. Number one, Ryan Pepio, who I thought looked really good again on Wednesday despite giving up four earned runs. And then there's a pretty big gap. Mike Clevenger, two. Logan Allen, three. Christopher Sanchez, four. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 